Oh, there we go. Ah! Well, I hope all of this is working. It's been so long. I've forgotten how to do everything. And once again, this stream is powered by StreamYard. So it's operating on a bit of a delay, but I see nine eyeballs in the corner. So I assume that means that there are people watching. Hello, people. I'm Ellie Vira. I am a plus size, tall and swole Lolita. And I haven't been posting much recently. All of you have probably noticed, or I don't know, that's a little egotistical to say, isn't it? Uh, I, I'm going to level with you. I have been just kind of slammed on all sides, work, life, health, hobbies, like completely slammed. Um, I haven't had a lot of energy and I know that it's pretty much common knowledge at this point, I think, that, um, you know, being a YouTuber comes with burnout risks and you don't even need to be much of a YouTuber to succumb to that. And I am no exception. Um, I could potentially be doing more live streams, but even when I have little snippets of time, I don't have the energy. And believe it or not, it takes a lot of energy to like sit here and be cheerful in front of the camera. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not wearing makeup or anything. Like this is me in my natural state at the end of a work day. Um, and I, this has to be good enough, I hope. But um, like when I actually prepare, that's even more effort and energy. And then just talking alone in my room to my camera is a ton of energy as well. So <laughs> I haven't been doing it and I really do apologize. I've had like little times to record snippets of things like um, I'm working very slowly on a modifying your Lolita like sewing tutorial ish thing about a process that I'm working on with a dress that I've had for about two years now. Um, but like sewing also takes energy <laughs> and filming while sewing and explaining to an empty room with a camera in front of you while sewing is like extra, extra energy. So there's, there's that. I see some people are saying hi in the chat. Hello. Hello. Um, does the live stream feel less like talking to yourself? Thank you uh, for asking such a great question, Jamaica. Um, I guess not because here I am answering your question, but it still does feel like talking to myself. And it's like a stream of consciousness, word blather, like word vomit. Um, very flattering stuff. Uh, so in a way, it's easier to stream. There's less time spent editing, less time spent preparing. Um less energy overall expounded, but it just like, y'all have no idea how busy my life has been. So let me catch you up real quick before we get into this all. And hopefully we'll get a couple more people joining. I know it's a weird, a weird time and a weird day. And I only gave like less than 24 hours notice. So I don't expect a ton of people to show up, but I like seeing y'all here. So I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend some time with me. Um, what has been going on in my life? So my rib is better. I think the last time I filmed was when I was still recovering from my bruised rib. So um, that's better. It took a long time, though. It took over a month to heal. So it took me a long time to get back into class. But even when I was out of class, it wasn't like I could do much of activities. So, um, that sucked. I am back in class, wrestling class. That is, I have been going three to four times a week since I got back from my injury. It's been a lot. Um, I'm very <laughs> cautiously optimistic that I might be able to debut by the end of the year. I don't know. I don't want to say it. I don't want to jinx it, but I've been wrestling practice matches, every week. Um, my coaches say I'm getting better. 
Uh, and I have an opportunity that I'm not allowed to talk about too much right now, um, but I might be helping to produce a wrestling show. So if you're in the Bay Area, at least stay tuned for news of that, because I will definitely be posting about it on social media of various places. And I hope to have like a vlog about it for YouTube eventually as well. Um, but that takes a lot of time and effort. And like, for those who don't know, wrestling training is two hours per day. I have to commute there by car. Uh, my spouse has started training with me, so he's going to be a manager and I'm going to be a wrestler. He's not necessarily managing me, but we do go at the same time. So like I have to wait for him to get home and then we immediately pile in the car, hit the road. And then at the end of the day, we go back and it's exhausting. We've also been working a lot of shows, specifically the Hood Slam and What a Drag shows. In California, we've been um, working the merch table and volunteering and helping out backstage and stuff. So that's taking a lot of time. Amazing opportunities, such great people, but really, really exhausting, especially the Hood Slam ones, because we do this thing called Ring Crew, where we dismantle the ring at the practice center, load it into a U-Haul, unload it at the venue, reset it up, run the show, and then dismantle it, put it back in a U-Haul, take it back to the practice center and then reassemble it all in a night. So it's a lot. Um, so fun though. So fun. I wish that there was a way that I could incorporate more Lolita items, which actually brings me a pretty nice segue to what we're doing today. Um, I have been trying to stop spending because I have a lot of health stuff still going on. I've had this undiagnosed, non-specific chronic health condition for a very, very long time. I had a lot of medical bills associated and piling up with that. I still don't have a diagnosis, but at this point, my symptoms are under control, so my life is significantly better. But um, the tests are still ongoing, and... Um, I have my very first colonoscopy next week. So that should be another, you know, thousand dollars to the healthcare system. Uh, <laughs> just to make sure that I don't have cancer. Woo! So um, that is like the last big thing to check off the list. Uh, but the money has been a little tighter than usual. And I've been trying to save for things. So I'm like unloading my storage unit and I'm going to need to do some sort of serious, like hardcore closet cleaning. Um, I'm not looking forward to it. I thought of doing a live stream, but to be honest, my last closet cleaning live stream was just my dresses when my wardrobe was smaller last year. And took four hours. So it's going to take a lot longer this time. I don't have the time and patience. I was thinking of trying to film something along the lines of like, how do you decide what to keep when you are faced with financial hardship and have to sell off your wardrobe and like how to do that, um, how to make those decisions, or at least talk about the decision-making process that I'm going through. Riho, would you like to make a cameo? If she screams, she gets to ask for a cameo. Come here. Come here. Show everybody your pretty face. Show everybody your pretty face, girl. No, no claws. Unhand my bed spread. Okay. Kitty time, Riho. Say hi, Ri. You want to sit on me? No? Boo! Oh. All right, well, I tried. <laughs> She'll be back. I left the door open, so hopefully they'll, uh, hopefully they'll all come through. I have four cats. Anyway, so I've been trying to call my wardrobe. I've been trying to make uh, hard decisions about what I know I can let go of, like right off the bat. If it's not sparking joy, if I've already made a video based on it and I look back at the video footage and I'm not happy with how it looks on me or whatever, then that's an easier decision. And I post that on Lace Market pretty much immediately. If it doesn't fit me anymore, that's another one. I've been holding on to some... Um, semi-precious like former dream dresses and stuff that I'm finally letting go of on Lace Market. Um, and I'm trying to update like a couple things a week at least so that there's like a little trickle of money coming through. Um, but it's just, it's not enough. I want to be more brutal. And the other thing is I just, since I don't have as much time to film and stuff, I don't have time to go out to things. Um, 
I haven't seen a lot of my friends in a long time, and especially like Lolita friends doing things with friends that I could wear Lolita outfits too. Like it's, it's becoming a smaller part of my life, unfortunately. Like during the pandemic, it absolutely saved me. Like I would have gone crazy sitting inside without any outlet for everything going on in here and like being able to be pretty and cute and step outside into the sunshine to film in my backyard was so nice. But uh, I feel like it's time to, you know, refocus on wrestling uh, and wear Lolita maybe a little more casually. So as such, I have put a complete uh, and utter halt on myself buying new JSKs. I'm trying so hard to maintain that. It can be very hard. Um, I'm trying not to buy any more blouses, JSKs. Uh, those are the things that are really uh, full to bursting in my wardrobe right now. Um, I am allowing myself to buy skirts, shoes, accessories, outerwear. If the price is right and I can move enough stuff out to finance it. So... Most of this is just skirts. Um, you've already seen the thumbnail for this video, so you know, spoilers, it's a lot of skirts. Um, the goal there is that skirts are so much easier to coordinate in a casual way. Um, I have cut sews now that I don't get enough use out of because I'm usually just one of those must be OTT, throw it on with like a JSK or an OP type Lolita, but Skirts will make my wardrobe more wearable on a daily basis. So I've been like cycling through some things. Like I sold some of my lady sloth prints and then rebought the prints as a skirt, which meant that I made a little tiny bit of money. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, I'm just replacing it. Um, but uh, I'm thinking the skirts will get a lot more wear for me than the dress version. Stuff like that. So um, here, I have a big old pile. At the very bottom is actually, I think, probably what I'm going to open first. It is the only thing that includes a blouse. And this is the Violet Fane Happy Tartan uh, skirt, blouse, and neckerchief, and beret. Um, I got a combo of colors. I totally missed out on the first re release of this. Um, I was going back and forth on the colors for so long. Um, finally decided to go with blue skirt and accessories and then a pink blouse. I thought that the colors in the plaids would match each other pretty well. And to me, that was the most like Ayazawa Paradise Kiss neighborhood story look, I guess, um, that was skirt specific. So um, I'm going to open that up. I don't think I'm necessarily going to try things on today, but I'm really curious about how I might be able to pair this blouse with other things here. So um, that's why I think I might open that first. Um, I've also got two boxes from Meta. One is the Violet Bouquet. Is that what it's called? Violet Bouquet. I have my spreadsheet open in another tab. Violet Bouquet Ribbon JSK. I got the purple one because... Well, somebody said on Ruffle Chat that they thought of it as like the sapphic print. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm i in a heterosexual marriage, but I am queer. So I'm like, yes, let's flag some in Lolita. I love that. Um, wish the OP would fit my shoulders. But alas, we got the JSK. And then the other one in, I think it's the bigger one of the two, is two skirts from their recent re-release of the Black Swan print. That was always one of my favorite prints. I had it on my wish list if I ever lost weight. I am not planning on losing weight. The fact that these skirts were made in plus size and in the colors that I wanted, I was just like, oh, no brainer, add to cart. So I got those there. And then this up here is from an indie brand called the Black Ribbon. Major shout out to them. I have um, I've been enjoying their socks and cut sews before now. This is the very first actual like main piece I've ever been able to get from them because aside from a couple of prints that don't really make my heart sing enough for me to add them to my closet, every time I've tried to go for a black ribbon release, my size, which is 
pretty much always the largest size sells out immediately. So <laughs> this was the first time I actually got to get in while the getting was good. Um, I saw this skirt in person at the Fanime fashion show and it was paired with the white cut. So that I already own. So it was like, <laughs> I want to look like that and like with a boater hat. It's it's going to be one of my staples. Like I, if there is an occasion that I can wear a skirt comfortably to a thing, I'm probably going to go for this skirt nine times out of 10. It is so cute. So I'm going to open these things again. Not quite sure about the order. We're just going to roll with it. But first let me take a quick look at the chat because I just noticed it's exploding and I'm really bad at keeping up with it. What's the last thing I read? Hello, people. Kingdom Hearts says, I just got home from my first date, had a cop ruin it with a ticket. Ooh, what don't cops ruin? Let's be honest. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of anti-law enforcement. I, I don't know if that's a popular opinion amongst Lolitas, but I've had some bad experiences myself. <laughs> yes thank you i i have paid the cat tax my heart is full as well olivia it's nice to see you on stream olivia and i are irl friends and we've been chatting about some plus size releases so hey i ordered that jacket i ordered a um atelier piero jacket um that olivia sent to me so <laughs> um let's see what else we got here Yeah, just figuring out what you want in your wardrobe can be such a struggle. And especially if you don't gravitate towards any particular style, it's like it, things can just snowball out of hand. Um, I definitely have dream dresses that I like want to be. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get them, but if I got them, I think it would be a lot easier to let go of the stuff that's not quite as perfect. Like, um, I had Hainuli's Royal Kitten JSK um, from the first release, and I didn't buy the updated release with the larger measurements when it came out, because back then I still fit into the measurements uh, from the original release. And now I don't, and I would absolutely murder someone to have the Royal Kitten JSK or OP with the cat cameo uh, in the center of the chest. Like, I love that print so much, but I have never seen it for sale secondhand in my size, ever. So, like, if I can get a grail dress, like, that is the holy grail for me then I think like I might get to a point where I'm not as into collecting, but until then I'm just like, if I think it'll look good on me or if it's a good price or whatever, like I, I'm not very good about limiting myself in terms of my purchases. And just to give you kind of a preview of what I'm thinking moving forward, it's like, I have so many dresses that I've never worn that are still new with tags, some of which are absolutely other people's holy grail dream dresses. And um, basically, if I've never worn it and I can get more than I paid for it, like I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff at a high enough price that it feels worth it for me to give it up. Um that the money will feel worth it and that I don't think I'll have like, not that I don't think I'll have trouble replacing. Cause I don't think I'll ever be able to find these dresses again. Um, but you know, because so much of what I have is like plus size friendly and rare and whatnot, if I haven't worn it at all, like it's gotta be on the chopping block. And the, the thing is that like you never have to sell anything to anyone nobody has to buy it either so if somebody doesn't like my prices and i can't sell it for what i think it is worth to me to keep um then i just won't sell it 
perfect. But then there will be things that people will find worth it and then they can buy those things and then I can keep the rest and that will kind of clear things out, I hope. Um, but I'm sure people will hate me and call me a scalper. So we'll see how all of that goes. I, <laughs> you gotta understand though, like that's just the way the market works. That's why people play paid like $700 for Milky Planet or whatever, like supply and demand. And what I have is in demand. So that's, uh, that's where we're going with there. Uh, why are vi violets sapphic? Uh, I'm not the best person to um, describe the history of this, but I believe in like Victorian Britain or something, it was a flag. So um, like women who were interested in relationships with women would wear violets as a, like a signal. Um, that's my understanding of it anyway um i'm this is all anecdotal though so you know uh please do look it up um specifically for you know those of you who are curious uh olivia says that she ordered the jacket in wine i did also we will be twinsies i'm excited Eden says, are any of your dream dresses from Dolby? Oh, I love Dolby's designs, but I have one dress by Dolby that I do not reach for nearly enough. So I'm trying to like be realistic about it. They're so beautiful, but they're so expensive and they don't fit into my wardrobe really well because the colors are like very natural toned and kind of muted. So like, I don't think I'm ever going to give up the dress that I have, which is, um, the terrarium dress in, in gray. Like I can't, I can't ever see myself selling that cause it's so beautiful and so comfortable. Um, I have it with pockets and waist ties, um, which are not necessarily a default when they're running sales and stuff, I guess. But, um, like to me, that is the garden party dress. If I want to go out and do something and be comfortable in it, I've worn it so many times. And it's also just really sentimental to me because it was one of the first things I reviewed on YouTube. So that dress with the different blouses was like my very first three chord video. So, uh, and that's what I became most known for. So super precious to me. <laughs> if anyone calls you a scalper, they don't know what that word means. Yes. Well, uh, I had a friend call me a scammer for uh, reselling something I found at a thrift store uh, for a higher price than I bought it for. Um, and we're not really friends anymore. <laughs> so some people, they, they have very strong opinions about this. I don't think they understand economics, but I can't be the one to tell them that. And I don't need that kind of smoke in my life. Anyway, uh, let's get into this, huh? I'm going to go from the bottom up now. You know what? No. Let's open up the Sando skirt because it's uh, it's on top and it's already out of the box because I, or it came in a packet. Anyway, it came in a packet and my cats were chewing on the packet. So I was like, let's, let's not though. Um, black ribbon orders come with candy. Very lovely. So this skirt ooh, is heavier than it looks just in terms of like pure mass. And I will need to iron it for sure. But here it is. The print is based on um, Japanese like cafe sandwiches that have layers of whipped cream and bread. And it's kind of like a cakey bread, like a sweet bread and fresh fruit. And for me, that's super nostalgic because I ate that a lot when I was living in Japan. Um, I'd like go out to the cafe down the street and I would study and uh, make my flashcards and drink matcha tea and eat these. So this is super cool. What can I say about this skirt right off the bat? Ugh. Besides that, I just really love it. It's all cotton. Super beautiful. It's got this row of lace at the edge. The cut of the skirt is pleated 
So it's got these like larger pleated um, lines that kind of run through it. It's lined also. The lining is not cotton, but um, the, the like frill on the edge is very soft as is the lining. I think it's gonna be very comfortable in hot months. And I appreciate that it's got this extra layer of um, ruffle at the bottom because otherwise it would be so short. <laughs> but I bet that's like an economic way of maximizing this fabric too, because I'd imagine it's very hard to do all the matching and, and whatnot here. And the, the pattern is, it's not like perfectly matched seamless. You can't tell where the, the side seam is but it is perfectly matched in that the stripes don't get all wonky. So a lot of care was definitely put into making this. Um, it has a pocket. Oh, it has a pocket and I am too strong for my own good. It doesn't have a pocket on the other side. Ah! Ah! Being attacked by a glove. Ah. Uh. No, it is the single pocket because uh, it's got a side zipper, which is awesome because it means that I'm going to have an easier time getting in and out of it at many more sizes as long as my waist remains in the waist range. Now, I should mention um, this is size three from the Black Ribbon, which is a 35 to 42 inch waist. So I'm kind of at the upper end of that, but I'm hoping that you know, with the, with the flexibility that the zipper and the oh, almost back, like almost full back shirring, I'd say this is like one third shirring for the full circumference, um, that this is going to give me enough flexibility to wear it at many sizes. Um, and I just hope that it's going to remain comfortable at all of those, at all of those sizes. Um, yeah, I don't know what more to say about this. Maybe this will be a very short stream if I don't have a lot to say about things. I'm gonna move my heat pack dog. Um, yeah, I just, I, I really love it. I'm so glad I was able to get in on this. I cannot wait to coordinate this. Um, I'm seeing a friend of mine this weekend who I've just kind of reconnected with after the pandemic kind of drove us apart. We've been playing D&D together since I was 17. Um, He's amazing, one of my closest friends. Um, and we just started like trying to make the time to spend time together again. And uh, we went to a VR thing, which I'm really glad I did not wear Lolita to because, oh my God, it got so warm in there and the packs were so heavy. It was so uncomfortable. Very fun. Not good for Lolita. But next, uh, next week, we're going to a uh, Lego exhibit. Uh, in San Francisco. So maybe I'll wear something like really bright, uh, such as this skirt, uh, and get some photos with the Legos. I'm sure he'd be okay with me out in Lolita. We've, we've gone out with me and Lolita before, so that should be fun. All right. Black ribbon sando skirt. Oishiso desu ne. All right. Boom, boom. All right. Now I think I will go straight to Violet Fane. Um, uh, I forgot to take all of the, uh, <laughs> I forgot to take off my address and stuff <laughs> because this was so ill-planned. Yay. Um, so I'm just going to open it kind of sideways so you can't see. You know, I've, I've heard horror stories back in the day about um, Lolitas who would like brag about the things they were about to get online and then their friends who know where they lived would like show up on the day that it was supposed to arrive, intercepted the post postal service and like basically uh, stole from their supposed friends. I don't know if that still happens, but y'all, the, the heydays of Lolita comms were wild and the horror stories you hear. Not so. Okay. Opening it from the side. I can never get a Violet Fane box open without destroying it completely. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. This is probably the hat. And this looks like the main pieces. Ooh boy. 
And that is an empty box for you to play with, Riho. Oh my God, she did not like that. <laughs> oh, one second. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Oh, are you okay? You want puff? Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. I put the box down next to her, and usually she's so into boxes. She wants to chomp on the box. She wants to sit on the box. Today, the box scared her, and her tail puffed up to, like, this size. And she ran around. <laughs> okay, now she's checking it out on the floor. Okay, so she, she just got startled by the noise. Um, all right, let's, let's open this beautifully packaged, by the way. Violet Fane always has the greatest packaging um and they always send really cute stuff as extras as well just like little stickers and stuff the samira character is so adorable i guess we've kind of got a theme going here samira means violet violet fane and then i've got the violet dress and samira anyway uh i really love the character she's super cute and I like this very delicate packaging that I'm trying not to wreck, but I am failing. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm already so glad I got the blouse in pink. This blouse is adorable. So one thing that happens uh, that Violet Fane happens to send along is that they include a little note about their garment care and manufacturing processes. This is really great because so many people have concerns about ethical consumption of Lolita. And, you know, I know that there was um, a while where it was very popular to kind of crap on Taobao brands because of the uh, Chinese cotton scandals and the slave labor practices and stuff like that. Um, but the truth is we don't really know where our stuff gets made unless the brand tells us. And this brand tells us. Um, a lot of European brands are really committed to that. It's one of the things I love about Violet Fane. They're based in Spain. Um, RR Memorandum in the UK is similarly excellent. Just totally recommend that you check that out if, if that is something you're into. Also, the Black Ribbon, everything is made in California. So Support, support people that make ethical slow fashion. Oh my goodness. They sent me a little handwritten note. So cute. And then some stickers, which are definitely going on my sewing machine. And this blouse. Oh no. This is going to be one of those things where I try to buy it in every color eventually. Maybe I'll see if they show up on the secondhand market. It was so hard to choose one color for all these things. I got to tell you, I was so conflicted. I wanted the yellow blouse and the red blouse and the blue blouse. I wanted all the blouses at least, but wow. I mean, this is really, truly adorable. Um, so it's very similar in cut to their other like short sleeve basic series with the puff sleeve. Um, it's got a very similar cut in any case, um, the collars got a similar like amount of lace and placement of it, but then the front's got these flower-shaped buttons. Um, waist is shirt, and given that this is the same cut as the other blouses that I wear all the time, they're my go-tos that I reach for. Beautiful cotton blouses. Um, I think it's very safe to say that this will fit me wonderfully. And that I will get to live my Miwako fantasy. Oh, very excited. So I'll just hang that up. Uh, 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 uh. But I'm not going to be undelicate with it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So if you have large biceps or shoulders, um, and those are often the limiting factor for you in terms of finding brands that will fit you blouse wise. I definitely recommend Violet Fane. Uh, everything is super stretchy and comfortable and it kind of just hangs loose on the body as a rule. Like that's how they design it to be a little loose and blousey, billowy. So that's really nice. And here it is. 
Now, I was hoping that this would be a really good match for this skirt, but I actually think that would be a horrible power clash. I'm probably not going to do that. Um, this is such a fabulous print. It really deserves to speak for itself and just breathe on its own. This, though, uh, so good. A statement piece all on its own, and if you've got, like, basic old-school style bottoms, this would pair really well with that. Um, here is the skirt in blue. It looks like there are a couple of little, like, stray threads and things. Um, with an actual tartan, that's kind of to be expected. This stuff is uh, woven so that uh, the print forms. Oh, so cute. So, okay, so the reason I picked these colors in particular was that they both have yellow and red as an accent within the plaid, um, but aren't yellow or red as a primary color itself. I thought that would be easier to match. Looking at them in person, I definitely think that's true. Um, I just, I really like how this all looks together. That's so good. Oh, I'm so relieved. I still want to buy it in more colors. Maybe, maybe someday. I haven't decided how I'm going to handle the possibility of like trading as part of this whole closet cleaning business. Though I do think like if my dream dresses were to somehow present themselves and somebody wanted to, uh, you know, make an offer to trade something that I've not wanted to give up, but is quite valuable for something that I've wanted for forever and is quite valuable. I would, uh, I would be into that. Wow. You know what? I'm just, this is too much to look at. So I'm going to rearrange these a little bit. There we go. Oh. Ah, that gives it a little bit of a break. Okay. So the lace at the bottom here and at the collar here is the same lace. It's super cohesive. This um, white flower really complements the buckle on the belt here. And the skirt has these applique pieces, which this one is, um, what's that called? That's that type of seam with applique where you overlay a zigzag stitch, satin stitching. This is such an, <laughs> I make pro wrestling gear, so I should know that term. Anyway, this one has satin stitching and embroidery. This one does not. Um, and then it's got Sumire embroidered on the skirt. The skirt itself is not lined. Um, this is the XL to 2XL size. It's just light and soft fabric. Um, I think of tartan as being kind of heavy, but even so, like, this is very light and airy. I think it's going to be good for the rest of summer. I'll probably still wear it in autumn and winter if I can just find ways to make that comfortable. Um, because look at this. I mean, this is so cute. This is, if I was a lifestyler, I'd sell my entire wardrobe and just buy this in every iteration. Ugh. I just want this to be like, my Pokemon trainer uniform. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, the skirt has full elastic shirt waist all around the top. It's got belt loops, which the belt goes into. The belt itself doesn't have any sort of like tooth or anything. So it just sort of slides to close. And the blouse also unlined. The shirring through the middle section is just made with the elastic sewn in version. Um, the placket is really nice. The placket doesn't match up with the rest of the plaid, but I don't really care. I think it looks kind of nice that it's offset actually. Um, and the plaid is really well matched on the skirt and at the side seams here. You can tell that these are kind of, <laughs> this blast in particular, it's a hard thing to do. Um, to balance like where it needs to intersect and the actual shape. So if it's not all boxy, it's really hard to match plaids in a way that's very flattering. So um, 
yeah, overall, I would say these are both beautiful pieces. The back's really simple. Uh, you know, I might, I might waver here. I might wear this to the Lego exhibit instead. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah, and the back side of the skirt is just like the front, but without the, the patch. I You can get it without the patch, but to me, this is so like the Happy Berry logo from uh, Neighborhood Story and Paradise Kiss. I could not, I could not leave that behind. I just want more stuff from this line that has this on it. <sighs> Amazing. Oh, catching up with the chat. Not a lot of comments on the sandwich skirt. That's okay. We are, it's a very limited re release run anyway. Um, so I'm glad you're not all coveting it. Because <laughs> that, that would be disappointing for you. Um, yeah, Violet Fane. Really excellent. Really excellent. Um, what's my... Favorite Violet Fane printer series? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I sold a lot of the stuff that I had of them. I had the Wizard School series, but uh, when I fell out of Harry Potter, I just kind of sold it. Um, I had the Charming T Town series in the JSK, but the JSKs that they make uh, don't fit my proportions very well. So I don't buy... Um, their, I mostly stick to their skirts now and their blouses because like their separates are so good. Like the dresses are beautiful, but since they don't fit and flatter my body perfectly, uh, it's just better for me to buy the separates. But between this and Otome Nostalgia, they're both like they both and the um, the cafe print too. All three of them have been like hitting me right in the Ayazawa manga feels which is how I got into Lolita fashion to begin with. It's what I want to look like. It's my aesthetic ideal. I haven't worn this out yet, but I have a feeling this will become my favorite. But they're all great. They're all great. And the gothic prints and stuff are so good too. They just usually also have like crosses in them. So I can't really wear them. Like the funeral, the funeral print is so beautiful. But uh, I don't know. Little, little too uh, Christian imagery for me sometimes. <laughs> Tessia says, you have trouble with the belt and it does not stay, has a long end with no loop. Yes, I have, um, I have found a little hack for that, actually. Um, Riho, are you asking for another cameo? Do not interrupt, please. Oh, baby. I don't know if you can hear her. Um Paper clips. Paper clips are my hack. So I got this uh, stationary set that included colorful paper clips. And if you just paper clip the uh, like loose hanging edge onto like from the bottom and the top, um, two different paper clips, two different directions at a point around your side or back, uh, it stays in place and it doesn't poke holes in your stuff. Uh, it's also really easy to adjust throughout the day. So um I do kind of wish that they would make belts with belt, loop, belt, you know, what is it called? Grommets, like grommets and teeth to fit together. Um, those are really hard to make and they do de degrade over time faster than this kind of belt though. So I totally understand why they don't. Um, but yeah, check out your local like supply store, wherever, wherever you buy your office supplies and see if they have paper clips that are large enough and a complementary enough color. That is, that is my tip for that. Do I have a blouse or cut sew that goes well with that first skirt? Yes, definitely. Uh, hold on. It's at the top of my drawers because I just wore it the other day and I just washed it. Uh, this is the sweet summertime strawberries cut so also by the black ribbon it's like these things were made to be together i mean the pink the pink is a near exact perfect match it's got strawberries and cross section um it's it's perfect i love it so much <sighs> i'm so glad that it fits me i hope they make even more sizes next time um 
it can be really hard to find manufacturers that will make plus sizes, I'm realizing. Um, like really hard. And I have aspirations of designing things and not having to sew them myself. Um, but I don't even know where to begin to find something that would be size inclusive. So that's a thing. Happy Berry Eat a Bag. Oh my God, I need that. I, mm. I have a bag problem. I have some strawberry stuff, like bags and whatnot, that I could just wear with this anyway. Um, I've got a beret. Oh, great, the beret. Almost forgot the accessories. Um, but yeah, I definitely, definitely would be interested in more merch type stuff. So here's the tie. Uh, it is adjustable, which thank goodness for that, because I have the thickest neck in the history of Lolita's ever. Um, I've been working out. Um, but just like the default size, I think would, would fit probably not with the blouse collar, but uh, super duper cute. Had to get this to match because again, that little berry, so good. Oh, it's so good. And it's the same fabric and notions. So just to kind of like tie things in together further, the flower lace here matches the flower lace here. And both of those are actually like an off white. They're not the same pure white as the rest of the, oh, and look at that. These, these laces match too. The whole collection is super cohesive, super mix and matchable. God, I'm going to wish I got more of it. Um, ooh. And here's the hat well-constructed beret, just the slightest bit of stretch through here, but otherwise it's one size. Oh, it's a little small in my head. I could not wear this with a wig, but without a wig, I quite like it. It's very cute. I almost got the, oh, this is very soft. I like the poofy ball. This will bring it into winter for me. If I just wear like a long sleeve old school blouse with this, perhaps also from Violet Fane, or maybe I'll get the, the long sleeve version of this baby. Oh, no, don't tempt me. Um, anyway, that's how you take this into winter. This is super cute. With the tartan and everything, like this just makes me want to go putt putt golfing. Oh, I love it. Pom pom on top, daisy lace edge, tiniest little bit of elastic for fit. It's great. It's perfect. I love it. Oh, I'm going to wear these forever. Oh, and another sticker. Yay, another sticker. All right. Man, we are just blasting through these. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, GLaDOS is talking about the Puppet Maker print. Um, that creeps me out. I... <laughs> I like dolls and stuffies and stuff when they're assembled together. <laughs> the The pieces apart make me a little whoop, um, super creepy. Love it for other people, just not for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those dresses where, like, you won't find anything else like it anywhere else in the world. Like, it's super unique. Something Violet Fane does very, very well. Whew. And I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only person that experiences JSK fit problems, but I'm also sad to hear that. So I, uh, I'm sorry about that. I think it's because of the way that they grade their uh, darts and princess cut uh, bodices. For us, maybe we just need a full bust adjustment, which it's kind of a crapshoot. You just have to try things on and see if they fit you. And uh, if you've got a boxier frame, like if your if you're bust is um, mostly carried in your rib cage and the ratio between your bust and your waist and your hips is less of an hourglass and more like, uh, what do they call it? Apple shape, you know, like straight up and down. Um, then Violet Fane is probably perfect. So just not, just not my body. <laughs> um, let's see. What? And now are you pet Petra? Petra, I'm on camera. If you want to be over here, you can come over. I will I will exact text 
You will pay. You will pay the cameo toll. Okay. All right. Uh, I can't remember which of these boxes has the dress and which one has the skirts. I think I'll just open the ones on top <laughs> because I've forgotten, uh, and that seems efficient. Oh, looks like we're getting a couple more people on the stream. Hello and welcome. I'm in the middle of unboxing a bunch of stuff that I meant to make videos about and will never have time to ever again. <laughs> uh, I'm only half kidding. Um, I mean, we'll see where my day job takes me, but it does seem unlikely that I'm going to have the same volume of videos that I used to over the pandemic. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem feasible. But um, if y'all are enjoying this kind of content and you're finding it helpful or interesting, we can do more of this. Um, I'll probably just let things stockpile and then I'll open them all at once, just like that move in Pokemon. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon on my commute. Um, whenever I'm not driving, I'm playing Pokemon. <laughs> oh. Okay. Missed a spot. All right. So this is for Meta. Ah, oh, this is the skirts. <laughs> the skirts. I'm so excited. As usual, Meta stuff. Everything comes with this. I have such a collection of these, by the way. Um, it's one, it's one of those things where if I'm selling a meta dress, I just include them at this point because sticker plus bag, I have so many, I will never use them all. What Pokemon are on my team right now? I am just trying to fill out my decks. Um, I beat, I, I'm playing, um, shield because I'm trying, I realized that I never actually beat the game. Um, after I bought it, because I got it, I played it for a week and a half, and then I got Animal Crossing in 2020, and it was like, eh, and I just kind of immediately diverted, and I went from playing Pokemon every day, all day, when I wasn't working, to Animal Crossing, and then I found other things to do, like Lolita content. So, um, yeah, my team, I had Lantern, um, Melodic... Uh, I'm forgetting the name, uh, the bunny, the bunny starters, final evolved form. Um, I nickname all of my Pokemon. So like, I don't really remember. I was thinking of actually doing like YouTube shorts slash tiktok -y format. I don't have TikTok, but I do the Instagram thing version, uh, where I just like introduce you to all my Pokemon and explain to you why I named them after specific wrestlers. Cause all of my Pokemon are named after wrestlers. Um, <laughs> Let me know in the chat or comment section if you think that's interesting and worth doing. Anyway, um, so I have that uh, that one. Um, uh, Corviknight, I think that's what it's called, the big black bird. Ooh, I'm missing somebody. I know I'm missing some people. Oh, uh, Dusclops, Dusclops. Um, because I'm playing it now, all of my friends have moved on for it from it, so I can't evolve him. Um, oh well. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. For the last, like for the last week or so, I've just been focused on like filling that decks as much as possible. I don't think I've ever tried so hard to fill the decks before. Um, I'm not great at playing Pokemon games. I just like the cute Pokemon. And I like making curry for the Pokemon. Anyway. Um, I appreciate that y'all are supportive of the live streams. Um, I will definitely... I will definitely try to, to make them happen more often. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what that'll look like. Maybe it's like a Friday thing occasionally. I bet I could swing it once a month, maybe. Well, but Fridays are also hood slam so often. So, okay. I don't know. I make no promises, but I do appreciate the support. Um, let's get back to it, shall we? And now I'm going to slowly move the box as not to upset the kitten. 
on the bed. Okay. So this is the black swan print. They re-released it in a skirt. The skirt has, I believe, two size ranges. I don't think I added it to my spreadsheet yet. So I might just have to go straight to the meta website and another tab here. Um, I believe the skirt is still in stock. So it's ready to ship. If you want it, go get it. Um, don't know if it's in stock in all the colors and sizes though. So yeah. Um, Meta has been releasing so much stuff recently. Um, like a ton of stuff all at once. Um, I've skipped a lot of those releases because I'm trying not to buy dresses, but I did get Happy Little Farm because uh, in the Bay Area, there's this wonderful um, little like petting zoo slash farm called The Little Farm in Berkeley, and they've got goats. And I've been there in Lolita before uh, for G-Lish week. And it was just, oh, so magical. <laughs> and I just love those goats. And so when I was like, oh my God, it's a goat print. I have to have this. Anyway, okay. So this item is under the basic series. So if you're looking for like, if you're trying to find it and you're looking through the prints, um, you're not going to find it. And apparently it is only one size, but it is a pretty generous size range. Um, the waist goes from 63 centimeters to 130 centimeters. So that is robust. Um, and it comes in two different prints, which each come in three different colors. Um, black Swan, which comes in gray, pink, and black. I got the pink and the black. Gray is really beautiful as well, but it just doesn't match my wardrobe. And I could not justify spending the money on three of this item. And then um, the other one, I think is just called like Grand Emblem. Um, yeah, Grand Emblem or Noble Emblem, I guess. Um, and that comes in brown, navy, and wine red, Bordeaux. Um, and that's a completely different print. But the skirt structure and everything is the same. Um, I think this is a fabulous opportunity because it's meta, but also skirts. So I can wear it more casually. Ha ha! Um, and again, you're, you're going to see this print and you're going to fall in love with it just like I did so many years ago. Let's start with the pink one. Oh, wow. It's quite light, actually. I can see why they call it the basic series. It is super basic. Um, see if I can find a side seam to see if it has pockets. Of course, it would be a... Um, cold day in July before Meta adds pockets so it'll nearly won't they? I can't even find a side seam. Is there a side seam? Yes, there is. Ah, and um, I heard recently that Meta is going to switch to having this style of uh, shirring where they've actually left a little bit of an opening so that you can take in or replace the elastic for shirring as needed. That's super cool. I feel like I don't know. Like I, I've never worn a piece to the point where it's elastic has given out, but now I can. Wow. Okay. So this is actually quite stretchy. Um, looking at it though, I do think it will probably fit better on somebody who is on the smaller end of that plus size range. Um, oh, now I'm, now I'm getting a little heartbreaky because I'm worried it's not going to look good on me. I guess I'll have to do some sort of follow-up video on this one because inquiring minds want to know, I'm sure. Um, my waist is about 102, 103 centimeters. So like just like 40, 41 inches, uh, give or take. But like, look at this skirt next to the other skirts. It's shorter for one. And the waistband just doesn't take up as much space on the hanger span. This one, um, 
also seems like a little more relaxed, but then when you look at the actual full width of the skirt, it definitely seems fuller. This does not seem as full. So I have a suspicion that this skirt is actually plus size inclusive. Um, <laughs> just stand up and throw it on. Okay, but actually I'm gonna do that with the black one because uh, I'm wearing a black top and I just feel like, well, no, it's still black, but if you look at the print, it's actually like a very dark brown. So I think I'd rather wear this with the black, but yeah. Let me go get a petticoat, be right back. <laughs> All right. I hope YouTube doesn't demonetize me for this. But anyway, um, here I am in my chillest petticoat. And by chillest, I mean it's got the least amount of poof and is also the shortest on me. Um, this is Melex T 45 inch A line petticoat. It does not fit me as well as it used to because I'm filling up this area more, but it gets the job done. Let us see how it looks with the sport. Wait, Noble Emblem has a cat on it? I did not notice that. I might have to go back and take a second look. Dang it. Just catching up with the, the comments here. So because it is so stretchy and does not have a zipper it's got to be a step into type of thing but since i've already got the petty on i'm going to pull it on over my head which sometimes is easier my hips are wider than my shoulders slash bust so um so when something doesn't fit going over my hips i can sometimes still make it work going over my head so let's see whoa malcolm hi I don't know if you heard him. Anyway, so it does it does definitely stretch quite a lot. Oh, maybe my worries were unfounded. It does feel pretty tight. And I don't think it looks super great. Like it's not laying super flat. I don't know how comfortable it would be for a long period of time. But that 130 range is really how much it can stretch to get onto your body, not how much it can stretch to be worn by you. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like a bit of a tight fit. They did, however, give me a way to elongate the elastic. I don't know if that would really work. Um, But yeah, I think this is this is how it is. Um, pretty good. I'm gonna take it off now so I can hang it up. Um, but yeah, I definitely would not recommend this for people over a hundred and five centimeter waist. No, no. Because um, if I'm at 102, it's got maybe a couple more centimeters it could stretch comfortably. Anything over, anything over that, certainly over 105, it's just not going to be comfortable. So now you know. Malcolm, do you still want to make a cameo? I'll pick you up once this is hanging up. He left. I'm sorry. You want to come back? No. Oh, look at this array. So 
it looks like there's really only one seam on the skirts, which is pretty cool. Also, they do have tags, but they're inside. So if somebody says new with tags and they don't show you a picture of this, if you're buying it secondhand, don't trust them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so here's, here's the skirt uh, seam. It's not like perfectly matched up because this is kind of an undulating line, but it's pretty good. Um, both of them in person are so gorgeous. Uh, this definitely doesn't read quite as black because it's, you know, brown and rose, but this is absolutely like an actual bluish black. Um, if you are a gothic leaning person, you'll probably prefer this one. Uh, if you're sweet and classic, this one, but they both have the same kind of scratchy, honestly, metallic gold lace at the bottom and then a slip of a lining which is attached at the skirt by a little thingy thing what's that called thread oh my goodness my brain is fried y'all and there's like sun in my eye one more moment i am so sorry Well, that's a whole different vibe. Uh, so this is how it looks with uh, less white natural light just on it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about these. I'm glad that I got a chance to try them on on stream because this is definitely the sort of thing where somebody would see waist up to 130 centimeters. That fits me. And that's the first time a meta skirt has ever fit me. And they would buy it and they would be extremely disappointed. Um, <laughs> I feel like there should be a recommended waist size. Is there a recommended waist size that I just didn't look at? Or is it literally just the garment's waist? Maximum size is the size of the product when the rubber is pulled and stretched to the maximum. But depending on your body tight, it may be difficult to wear, even if it's tight uh, within the right size range. Okay, it's got a bit of a disclaimer. Um, it is necessary for bust or hips to fit through the waist. Yeah, they do give a bit of a disclaimer, but I would still suggest no more than 105 centimeters. Um, I think I'd have to give it a try, like wearing it out and about before I decide if I'm keeping them both. So I'll keep the packaging nice, um, just in case I end up reselling them, uh, or returning them. It's just, it's just about like the way that it fits me, um, around my pudgy areas, but, you know, it might, I think it would look nice with um, the kind of blouse that doesn't need to be tucked in specifically because I, what I'm concerned about is that, you know, it kind of makes my flesh kind of bulge over the top a little bit and the actual uh, rows of elastic don't really lie flat and nice like, like they do here on the sando skirt um, or, and they also don't look as like, uh, tightly bunched as they do here on uh, the Happy Tartan skirt. Oh, and Kenny has found a box. Hello, Kenny. Oh, she made a cameo in my last video in a box, but I'm... Oh, and she's chomping this one, too. That's, that's her thing. Kenny's the chomper. But, yeah, it looks like uh, the skirt is still in stock in a couple of colorways, specifically the pink one. It's in stock in pink. Um, and then the uh, other print version, brand emblem, I did not know it had cats on it. I I noticed like unicorns and swans. But if I had known there was cats, I might have I might have gone for it. Um, I'll have to take another look. But uh, that one's in stock in red and uh, brown. So, if this fits your measurements, you might still want to check it out. I don't really know. Um, 
Yeah, maybe let's move on to that last box. Maybe I'll get through all of this stuff before my spouse comes home. Kenny, what are you doing? Kenny, I know you're camera shy. I'm going to let her, like, chill in the box, and then I'm probably going to try to grab her and show her off because she is so beautiful. Oh, she's chomping on that box. It's okay. I can't use that box anyway because it says DHL on it. I try really hard to recycle and reuse things, y'all. Like, if it's just a white box, I will keep it uh, broken down and stored in my... Uh, <laughs> in my garage uh so that i can reuse it because i just and same with like all the, the outer packaging i i sell so much stuff that it's like it's nice to have packing materials that are recycled it feels very green all right so this last one is the violet bouquet jsk also by meta Lo and behold, sticker and instructions. Here's ooh, 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 ooh. Very excited. Here's the other bag, ignoring the bag. I would not put this box on the ground, Kenny, but you're already in a box, so hopefully you're okay with it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, this dress is going to wreck me. I love it. Oh, I already love it. Purple. I'm a purple person. Purple's my favorite color. Um, if you didn't know, if you couldn't tell. Um, this print, though, had so many lovely colors. I really could not decide between this and the green. And then somebody was like, well, the purple one's kind of more bisexual. And I was just like, I like your reasoning, perfect stranger on the internet. I think I will. Um, but because it's about, like, the theme is violets, it's going to have purple on it no matter what. So all, all of the colorways have some degree of purple. This is really obnoxious lighting. I'm very sorry. Oh, I think I hear my spouse. Hey, honey. I'm still streaming. Okay, bye. Oh. So beautiful. Oh my god. Cleaning up after this stream is going to be fun. I get to like fold everything and put it into place. So, okay. Got a hanger. Mm -hmm. This is going to be one of those dresses where I just notice more and more detail on it that I did not notice or care about when buying it because the stuff that's really, really obvious was compelling enough. But here we go. I'm just going to put this front and center so we can all get a good look at it. Wow. Oh, wow. Mmm. I just, I need a minute. <laughs> it's so pretty. Okay, so first of all, I should say that this is, I believe, cotton. It feels like cotton anyway. Um, a lot of Meta's dresses are um, like a cotton blend. Or sometimes they're like really thick, heavy, like woven material. Um, so it's, it's like, even though they'll say on the website, you know, what it is made out of. It's sometimes hard to tell what exactly really is. Um, so that's what we've got here. Um, but I'm gonna check the website just to see if it does say if it's cotton, cause I'm curious. Product details. Uh, 100% cotton outer dot tool, which is polyester, lace, tool, lace, chemical lace, satin, ribbon, clear cut ribbon. Okay, so it does have a lot of plasticky components, like the laces, polyester lace and stuff, but the print itself is cotton. Mm, lovely. It's got a couple stray threads, but we don't mind. Um, 
So right off the bat, this is my favorite cut when it comes to Meta's JSKs. I really, really, really love um, whatever this is called. I think of it as like a bib yoke, <laughs> not a flattering way of putting it. I hate the lighting here. Um, but I love I love this motif, just like a little little something to add some extra interest at the top of the JSK bodice. Um, it makes me feel like I don't have to wear a necklace. Sometimes I really want to wear a necklace, but I feel like it would detract. Um, this is one of those dresses where I think it would detract because it's got these like row of pearls, um, plastic pearls, but still um, these beautiful soft satiny bows and then these three buttons beneath. It's very similar in cut shape to the, uh, what's it called? Strawberry Garden. I think strawberry garden JSK. Um, I made a video about it a while back. It's Navy blue and it's got bunnies and strawberries on it. Um, one of my favorite dresses, um, especially like from meta, but also from anywhere. I love that dress. It's so easy to wear. This is much more detailed and like over the top and fancy looking. It does not seem like the sort of thing you'd necessarily wear to a farm. Um, but I love floral motifs. I'm struggling to avoid the temptation of buying the new Meta floral, um, what's it called? Uh, the new, uh, what is it called? It's, um, it's named after a woman. There's like, uh, this is going to drive me nuts, but it's like, uh, they've got the JSK or the OP, um, with like a matching blouse and a bonnet and a capelet and everything. And I already haven't worn my Ellie JSK that came with a capelet and the capelet didn't fit me. So I'm like really weary of buying more stuff that I know is that style. But uh, that print is so beautiful. I love Meta's floral stuff. So this is stunning. Um, it's got the brand name along the bottom here. And these like cameo windows with baskets and arrangements of violets in different configurations. And it's got this uh, lace overlay, which is actually, um, I think this might even be the exact material they used on the Cats and Cherry Cake uh, JSK set as well for that spotted lace overlay. Um, for like the overskirt and stuff, but they've got the print covered in this in a couple of places to kind of subdue it more, um, specifically on the bow here, through the yoke, and um, on the straps, which I think just adds even more, sorry, more depth, more texture. Um, it's so beautiful. It's got a ton of different types of lace. Looks like this is the same lace here. And then this along the edge of the yoke here is the same lace that's right there. And then this lace on the edge also is edged around the parts of the top of the bodice. And there's like another little hint of it peeking out there. And then as so many prints that Meta does uh, produce includes also um, a printed lace, like as part of the motif of the print. So that's super cool. This is also a pleated uh, skirt design, which I tend to like. I just think that um, sometimes when it's gathered all the way around, depending on how much fabric is used, it can make you look kind of bulky around the waist. Not you specifically, me, I guess specifically, it can make me look kind of bulky around the waist, but uh, much less likely to happen when it's got a pleated waist area. Um, and as so many mad dresses often have, these little bows are not removable. Little satin bows down there. This one is removable. Very nice. No pockets because Meta can't give me everything I want. Light polyester purple skirt lining. And then if I turn this around. Full back shirring. Wow, this looks quite generous. 
Uh, this should be quite um, comfortable for me. The buttons on the waist ties and straps are these little crystally buttons. I think this is like one of Meta's default button styles. What was I just looking at that has those? I don't think it was Patissia in the forest. I just sold some Meta dresses and I'm trying to sell some more that make my heart ache because I'm going to really miss them. Um, I think it was the um, three-tier frill gingham dress that I'm trying to sell right now. Anyway, these little buttons pop up all over the meta. <laughs> the metaverse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, tags right here. And look at how well presented the waist ties are. I don't even want to untie them. They often come untied. This one did not. Um, but look at how like well this cameo fits. Oh, so lovely. Waist ties are nice and long. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, that's a whole lot of stuff that I've got to find occasions to wear. <laughs> uh, and that's everything I planned on unboxing. I have definitely got more stuff in the pipeline, like coming to me in the mail. Um... I guess I'll try to schedule another unboxing stream. Uh, in the meantime, let me catch up on the chat. I'm scrolling back quite a bit because I realize I haven't looked since I opened the dress or the skirts. So um, I've got some catching up to do. Ah, oh, late hello to all of the late joiners. <laughs> what are some of your favorite Pokemon of all time? What type is your favorite? Ooh, um, grass type. Probably most of my favorites are grass type or electric or um, normal. Eevee is really high up there for me, um, especially now that I have an, a niece named Eve and we call her Eevee. Um, I made her a little Eevee costume for her first Halloween and I keep buying her evolution stuff. I just love the evolutions in general. I've always really identified with Eevee because um, she can be anything she wants to be. Um, but I also just, Bulbasaur was my OG favorite, um, as is Meowth. Most of my favorites are from Gen 1. Um, Bulbasaur, Weepin' Bell, specifically Weepin' Bell, not Bell Sprout, not Victory Bell, <laughs> Weepin' Bell, um, <laughs> and, uh, Meowth. I love all the different variants of Meowth that are coming out now, like Alolan Meowth, Gal Galarian, Galarian, all the different Meowths. Dynamax Meowth's my absolute favorite, though, because he's a long boy. He reminds me of you, Riho. You back for a cameo? No, she runs away. Okay. Back to the chat. Maybe I should look into more low poof petties for these skirts. Maybe less poof will mean less discomfort because of less layering. But anyway. Um, Tessia says the older fully shirred meta skirts do not go over 120 centimeter, 26 centimeter hips. Same. I think your measurement's actually quite close to mine. <laughs> um, I've never been able to buy Meta's older skirt releases um, cause every time I've tried, it's been like crown label or something and they've always come out way too short for me. So I just kind of gave up, but I really like a lot of the prints and I'm so glad they're getting re-released. Oh my God. <sighs> so good. I'm glad y'all like the skirts, even if it's not like head over heels in love for me. I'm definitely going to try to make them work though, especially the black one. I think it's really like making my heart sing in this colorway. Um, the pink is definitely more my wardrobe, but the black definitely just calls to me more, if that makes sense. Anyway, if I can, if I can make them fit comfortably, um, 
then yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably wear them pretty often. <laughs> if not, then I'll probably see them on my lace market soon. <laughs> The meta uh, pink skirt with the violet fane blouse. I'm not. I'm not sure. I dig that idea. I think this is so purple in hue, and this is so like red orange. It's certainly not as bad as the clash with the sando skirt, but I. I don't think I'd be reaching for this blouse with that skirt anytime soon. <laughs> Alaria says, I often wear elastic waist skirts over corsets to give a solid surface for them to sit on, especially high-waisted skirts. That is extremely smart. Um, <coughs> I don't think I've talked this much in a month. Ah, excuse me. Yeah, that makes total sense. I have some corsets and waist cinchers that I wear with Lolita from time to time, but it's usually about like helping my posture <coughs> mm. sudden tickle in my throat god i hope it's not the vid oh gotta get my body under control here wow anyway um you know what? Black Ribbon was nice enough to send me something that is essentially a cough drop. I'm going to just stick this in my mouth. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, what was I talking about? I'm so sorry. Corsets. Um, I just think there's like a time and place for them. And if they make you feel confident and they help your brand fit better and you're comfortable in them, that's great. But I have so many gastrointestinal issues that, like, I pretty much have to be having a back issue in order to wear a corset because, for me, they're, like, posture correction more than anything else. Um, or if I'm, like, trying to fit into an old costume or a dress that I'm just on the borderline of, sometimes I was throw on a corset. But I'm kind of past the point in my life where I want to make myself smaller to fit into clothes. Um, I want the clothes to just fit me. <laughs> And I'm spoiled, so I get to I get to make that kind of demand of my wardrobe. I mean, all of these things will just they'll just fit me. I can just throw them on. So, um, yeah, I guess all things being equal, I would prefer not to have to make stuff stuff smaller. But I do definitely see the point about making things like smoother and flatter um, and firmer as well, because I'm quite fleshy. I'm working on the six pack, but it's a long way off. So in the meantime, when things don't just lay flat, putting a flat surface behind them will, will help with that. So that's, that's quite smart. Mm. Now we're getting into the purple violet dress. Um, <laughs> purple people eater reference. I uh, I actually just cut a wrestling promo about being a purple people eater. Um, I'm a four eyed, no horned, fighting purple people eater. Um, <laughs> that's what I said. It was a bit of a stretch, and it's still a stretch now. And now it's embarrassing. Anyway, um, yes, the Rosalie, the Rosalie print. Thank you, Olivia. Um, almost identical to the LEJSK in cut, if that's the one you're talking about, pre-ordered in the rose color. Yeah, the old rose or the, um, what do they call it? Antique purple or whatever. I mean, the mint's beautiful. The blue's beautiful. All of it's beautiful. That's the dress I was talking about for sure. Um, yeah, I just, I haven't worn the LE dress and I keep thinking to myself, oh, I'm just going to save it for the San Francisco Dickens Fair. It's a Christmas fair. It's in the Cow Palace. It's this thing I would always want to wear Lolita to. It didn't happen for the last two years. And then 
this year, I think it is happening to some extent, but um, we're boycotting it because apparently management is incredibly racist and does not protect their performers of color. So we do not abide. Um, so until that's resolved, I'm not going. And it's called Ellie dress. Like, I'm Ellie. This dress is for me. Um, but it is actually probably on the chopping block for my next closet cleaning. <laughs> I'm so upset, but I'll be okay. I've just got a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, and a lot of stuff that I've never worn. And a lot of stuff I've never filmed. I still haven't worn Cats and Cherry Cake. I mean, how did that happen? I was looking forward to that print for months. Anyway, gotta prioritize things. So, catching up, I'm almost caught up with the chat. Uh, name the dress and brands. Okay, yes. Um, this is the Violet's Bouquet dress. I believe the full dress name is Violet Bouquet Ribbon JSK. Uh, it's by Metamorphose Tomp de Fee. Also by Metamorphose, I've got the Black Swan skirt in pink and black. Behind them is the Happy Tartan release. Short sleeve pink tartan blouse and skirt with embroidery uh, by Violet Fane. And then the first one, last but not least, is the Sando skirt by the Black Ribbon, uh, which was a very limited run. So I don't know if it's really uh, something you can just go and get at this point, um, but definitely follow the Black Ribbon because... If that sort of stuff's your jam, that's a that's a fruit pun. Uh, if that kind of stuff is what you're into, then you'll really like the black ribbon in general. I know I do, and they've been posting a lot of like corsets and stays and like belts and stuff recently, and I'm just like, oh. so waiting to see what comes out in my size range. <laughs> Tessia says, I like your edited videos, too. They are more concise. Agreed. Um, I mean, this is long. This has been going for an hour and a half. I totally understand. Um, the videos that I post usually take me, like, an hour and a half to film tops. Uh, well, no, bottoms. At least 100, uh, 100 minutes to film. Um and then when I do more chords and stuff, I do a lot more. But what you don't see is all the crap I edit out because I literally talk at my camera like this. And then if I feel like I rephrase, if I didn't say something right the first time, just like that, I will rephrase it over and over again until I get a take that I like. So I get a lot more footage and then I have to like rewatch it and edit it all down. And it's, it's a lot of work. In fact, I am so picky about the way I edit things that I edit out like fractions of a second if there's too big of a pause in between like this parts of a sentence because um, I just have no patience for YouTubers that go, um, uh, well, mm, and just like have uh, dead air, you know, radio term, like nothing, nothing going on. So that's why I talk pretty much the stream of conscious, but it's, it's not for everyone. I know that there are a lot of people that will probably find my style like too fast paced and obnoxious anyway. So I, I enjoy the live streams because they take the filming time and that is it. And then like, you know, I post it up and I add links to the description or whatever, but it doesn't take a lot of effort compared to the video. Um, like the edited video, but I do, I do plan on still having more of that sort of thing. Eventually, I just don't know what form it's going to take. Um, but I'm really going to try my best. I know it's, it's also just so hard because YouTube is very punishing. Like they want you to make really, really long videos or short videos that are under a minute long. They don't want five minute videos. They don't want 10 minute videos. They want like 20 minute or more or 60 seconds or less. Um, so that doesn't really leave a lot of room 
for me to do my lower maintenance ideas. Like uh, every time I've put out a shorter video or a less formal video, uh, YouTube algorithms like, I'm not going to show this to anyone. <laughs> So that said, I should probably say subscribe if you haven't already. I assume you have because you're here. But um, if you have not yet subscribed, please do. And also click the notification bell thing because it's like, I know that less than half of y'all that watch those videos are subscribed. And I, I really have to rely on YouTube's algorithm and what they prioritize. Um, and I'm just not going to give in to clickbaits and rigid schedules and pumping out whatever at the detriment to my health and my wellness. So um, I still I still do want to give you what, what I can. Um, I'm also not great about posting on social media, but if you can, uh, follow me on Instagram, Ellie Vira Wrestling, uh, all one phrase. That's also a good way to keep in touch with what I'm doing. I do think that it would be a lot easier for me to just like wear Lolita out of the house and post coordinate photos um, without like the pressure of this a video or a stream to, to have included. I think I would wear Lolita a lot more, but I get this like paralysis, right? Where I look at my pile of boxes and I think, oh, I can't unbox the happy tartans thing until I'm ready to put on um a wig and makeup and try to style it four different ways to be inspired by Ayazawa. Or like, oh, I can't I can't wear um the cats and cherry cake JSK until I uh finish this like specific project I'm working on with uh accessories. I'm trying to make accessories for my cats to match me. And then I'd have to wrangle my cats for that. So, like, I should just find other ways to enjoy the fashion and share it with y'all. Because that's ultimately what you're here for, I assume. Um, you're not here to see me flex in a tank top. So, <laughs> thanks for sticking around for that anyway. Uh, <laughs> I think I've taken up enough of your time. I don't have anything else to unbox or talk about, really. Um... And I just don't have the energy right now to do a tarot reading. I do like to do those sometimes, but today is not the day. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it for me. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, for those of you who have been chatting with me, thank you so much for chatting so that I don't feel so alone and like I'm talking to myself in an empty room with my cats in it. Um, and yeah. I have been Ellie Vira, a plus size, tall, and swole Lolita. And you have been a great audience. And now I will say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>